Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, this is a conversation for a report on the new role of voice uh, um, with uh, uh, Volti and Wi-Fi calling being introduced in mobile networks. This is part of a report from a sense of feeling collaboration with uh, RCR Wireless. Uh, um, today in my conversation, uh, Shamal Ramachandra, the Director of Product Management at Qualcomm Technology uh, is joining me. Um, Shamal, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, thank you. So, um, Qualcomm, you do many things. Can you tell us what you do specifically on voice? Sure. So, uh, on our uh, products, uh, basically the Snapdragon uh, chipsets and uh, various other products that we have, we have thus far supported uh, several forms of uh, 4G LTE voice technologies. Uh, what I specifically work on is uh, IMS or IP multimedia subsystems. And the IMS-based voice delivery is what uh, people refer to as Volti these days. So uh, at Qualcomm, I take care of uh, all of our IMS suite of features, Volti being the primary voice option, and now voice over Wi-Fi uh, being one of the most rapidly growing voice option as well. So I define the roadmap and feature set for uh, Qualcomm's IMS uh, stack product uh, in, in conjunction with uh, our customers and our partners, namely operators worldwide, uh, taking into account the uh, overall uh, ecosystem needs for, for voice technologies. Well, that sounds a very interesting job, and uh, you're covering a lot of ground there. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, with, with Volt and Wi-Fi calling, um, you know, there was the initial expectation that, uh, well, and, and which is met, that uh, voice is getting better, uh, more integrated with data, and, uh, but it also turned out it's more complex because, exactly because of that. Um, so how is voice evolving in, in the sense that it's, we're used to voice, we've always had voice, but th th it's, it's really changing um, in significant ways. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, on LTE, ever since uh, uh, Volti as a technology caught on, uh, voice, I would say, has made significant leaps and bounds uh, uh, when it comes to the technology itself. So what has happened is uh, a lot of deployments for uh, Volti have, uh, have used the wideband codec, AMR wideband. So from a pure sense of voice or speech quality itself, that's a significant jump for, for most users, for most network deployments out there. Furthermore, the transport itself has now switched from traditional circuit switched to uh, this more modern or more innovative packet switched interface. So uh, having done that kind of a switch, does a whole lot of uh, additional, uh, uh, you know, uh, user-facing uh, things in terms of being able to facilitate uh, a lot of interesting novel use cases. Uh, the most primary one being, and this is something that people uh, might not even remember uh, going forward, uh, being able to support true simultaneous voice and data. So not too long back, uh, that was not possible in, in many networks uh, because of certain technology evolution related limitations. But with the advent of voice technologies like Volti, that as a baseline is now fully possible. Given that's possible, several additional advanced use cases or advanced calling use cases become popular and possible. Uh, things like being able to uh, integrate uh, additional multimedia on top of uh, voice calls or voice dialogues and things like being able to move uh, voice calls or continue voice calls from cellular air interfaces to other uh, non-cellular air interfaces such as Wi-Fi. So all of these things become possible as a result of the more recent uh, adv advancements in voice technologies. And you touched a lot of uh, very crucial topics here. So uh, let's start with, with the first one, which is the ability to embed voice or to use voice uh, for new um, use cases. So it's not a phone call from me to you as human to human, but it could be embedded in any, in any service, really, because data and voice can coexist. Um, can you tell us about what, what, do you, what are you seeing in that area specifically? 
So uh, what we are seeing uh, are, are advancement towards trying to uh, facilitate uh, newer use cases in terms of conference calling or, or newer use cases in terms of being able to um, incorporate advanced forms of alerting or, or, or ringing on devices, like visual alerting, for instance. Uh, that uh, has additional use cases that uh, people are typically not used to seeing on, on their phones. Uh, those seems to be uh, areas that a lot of operators are interested in. And uh, we are seeing uh, interest in multi-device type use cases where uh, people might want to uh, retain a primary cell phone as the primary voice uh, device, but might also want to pair a tablet or perhaps their laptop PC or, or any other number of connected devices uh, that might have a microphone and speaker. Uh, into into the whole mix of devices. So these are all kind of advancements that uh, worldwide are getting explored in a in a gradual manner and will soon enough become fairly commonplace. And, and yeah, and this is this is quite in, in interesting. The fact that the mobile operator now can route a call not just to your primary cell phone where you have just attached to your phone number, but you can use your phone number basically to track you to whichever device you're using. So you can have any device. And the phone number it acts as a way to identify you as a person, as an individual, rather than as a device, and um, yes. that is that that is quite interesting. Uh, but from a mobile operator point of view, that also means that they're going to be reaching the subscriber on a device that they don't might not know what the device is, they don't control it. Is that you think that that's an issue? Uh, that shouldn't be a problem at all because uh, all these devices are going to have to be onboarded in a proper manner. So there are going to be security plane checks and balances that are put in place because ultimately it might be an operator's infrastructure that gets used significantly to enable these use cases. So also there will be proper checks uh, in terms of bringing devices on. Uh, now the devices may not themselves be things that uh, are, are procured and distributed by operators themselves. These might be devices that users themselves own uh, through through other mechanisms, but uh, that should be absolutely fine because uh, the end goal here is to try and meet these newer demands that you and I as end users perhaps have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, one of the reasons why I find this interesting is because uh, um, one of the advantages that a lot of uh, OTT applications used to have is the fact that you can use the same application across any device because it doesn't depend on the on the network. Uh, does that mean that uh, mobile operators will gain uh, a new way to compete with OTTs or to offer a, some, uh, to, to, to get, to use one of their, their uh, advantages in, in their own network? On, on uh, the cell phone form factor or, or on the devices that operators do uh, allow uh, direct connectivity through, especially through their uh, own spectrum resources, Clearly, technologies such as Volti will uh, enable them provide better quality because there is a path to more <clears throat> sophisticated codecs, uh, and and there is a path to uh, better quality of service guarantees on those air interfaces. So truly, yes, technologies like Volti, for instance, are going to be uh, tools that operators could use to to compete with uh, OTT applications and, and provide better uh, better than before voice quality to all their subscribers. Uh, on these other devices that I talked about, they're ultimately uh, the, the actual dialer or the actual speech uh, software is perhaps more akin to being OTT itself, meaning it's just another client that is uh, benefiting from the fact that these devices can connect to the internet and can connect to the voice servers that an operator might host. So in that sense, there the space is fairly equal, but on the operator's own networks themselves, technologies like Volti are newer tools that can assist the operator in providing better voice than ever before, something that's better than OTT applications as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the better quality, uh, I, I guess, to, to some extent, is enabled by the fact that you have more capacity in the network and uh, better latency. What are what, is there something specific about LTE that uh, makes it so much better for voice? 
So a uh, better quality comes because the uh, operators are able to identify these specific flows as being voice flows and then they can put to use all sorts of uh, physical layer technologies that the LTE standards have defined. Uh, things like, for instance, making use of better scheduling mechanisms or things like uh, using tools that assist in terms of improving the link budget for the users. Uh, and, and things like uh, technologies that help with uh, battery power uh, consumption reduction. So things that you might have heard of in the industry, uh, SPS or semi-persistent scheduling, mm -hmm. uh, connected mode DRX enhancements, TTI bundling. So all these technologies are essentially things that have been designed for uh, assisting with the real-time services such as voice. Uh, these are inherent capabilities in the LTE air interface and this is what LTE as an air interface is good at in terms of being able to uh, uh, benefit these special use cases. So these are some things that operators would be able to use for technologies like Volti and these don't lend themselves as easily to over-the-top applications that uh, that can provide voice but but can't, uh, can't necessarily uh, compete in, in, these, uh, in these regards. Right now, uh, with with the better quality comes also a, a sort of more demanding way to test the network, to test for quality, because you want to make sure you get exactly what you want. Uh, so how is it changing the way we test and monitor voice performance in the networks? Absolutely. So uh, when it comes to voice as a service, uh, the KPI or the, or the key performance indicators that operators are used to uh, the traditional ones do remain relevant, but then there are newer things that uh, ought to be monitored because we're talking about uh, a switch from uh, the circuit-switched world, like I mentioned, to the newer packet-switched world. So things are changing with regard to the demands that uh, that uh, the technology and the customers place on, on the device, on the cell phone itself, as well as on the network. So... Uh, Typical uh, KPI like uh, uh, success in terms of being able to set up and retain calls are absolutely critical. Uh, and also KPIs that reflect on true voice MOS or voice uh, quality, those are critical as well. Newer KPI that have become very relevant now are things like uh, supporting SRVCC. These are call continuity options between packet switched air interfaces and circuit switched air interfaces. So it becomes very critical to start monitoring those as well because uh, with 4G, with 4G voice, in reality, networks are not as homogeneous as they will eventually be. So today, uh, this kind of uh, mix of operator provided uh, cellular technologies or mix of deployments are are demanding that such call continuity mechanisms be put in place as well and, and that these work uh, at a level where overall voice experience that users like you and I get are at par with what we are used to thus far in cellular world. So uh, all these things go into defining newer metrics, things like call continuity delays or call continuity interruption uh, and uh, call continuity success rate as well. So these are parameters that are becoming more and more relevant with uh, with 4G voice or with 4D. And, and I guess that uh, the, the fact that operators are focusing more and more on the quality of experience, so it's what the subscriber sees from the handset or the mobile device point of view rather than what happens within the network. So it's not just network performance, it's really what matters to the subscribers. Is that, is that changing the way mobile operators uh, uh, manage voice traffic? So uh, the, the performance that a user ultimately sees is often pinned to the device and, and definitely to the network as well in, in some sense because there is an expectation that uh, uh, quality that you're experiencing on the device is subject to network conditions as well. But, but you're absolutely right. So the device plays a very important part here and uh, on our platforms, for instance, uh, we focus specifically on improving Volti experience on the Snapdragon uh, chipsets and, and key focus goes into optimizing all the LTE air interface features that, uh, that I had uh, briefly mentioned. 
uh, things like uh, SPS, TTI bundling, DRX optimizations, as well as mobility optimizations, because these will ultimately give the user uh, the same kind of uh, feel for voice as a service that they have thus far had on circuit switch domain. Uh, to go hand in hand with these enhancements, there are going to have to be network side uh, tuning activity as well. And these are the ones that often take time in terms of uh, bringing the network to a level where, where the network is robust enough to, to provide 4G voice. So there is a lot of activity happening at both ends. Yeah, and I guess there is a lot of learning we, we're doing still. And uh, But also the operators have the ability now, to start having the ability to optimize the network performance in real time. So they might be able to um, manage tra voice traffic and data traffic at the same time in different ways, depending on what is the congestion level or what is the, the, the load level uh, at the specific location. So And they can do it in, in real time. Uh, do you see that happening already, or is it going to be in the future? To some extent, that is happening already. Uh, operators are coming to terms with the fact that uh, very soon, uh, voice might mean all IP uh, in their entire network. So uh, thus far, all sorts of uh, load management paradigms that they had in place, uh, which perhaps differentiated between uh, voice and data as being IP and non-IP, those type of fundamental assumptions are uh, uh, no longer very valid. So operators are thinking about uh, how to better manage this type of a mix that they are going to start seeing in their network. So it's it's definitely happening. Standards are addressing this. Uh, network implementations are addressing this. Devices are uh, in a position to be able to specifically call out voice type IP flows as being separate from normal data IP flows. But that will be another reason where you will see continued improved performance for Volti-like services when compared to over-the-top applications, because they might look more like data uh, from an operator or from a network's perspective. Uh, yeah, these things are definitely happening now. Uh, and, and we will see the momentum grow and, and uh, a wider paradigm being put in place as, as time progresses. Okay, now, um, before you mentioned Wi-Fi calling as one of the hot areas for, for voice, uh, um, uh, how do you see operators using Wi-Fi uh, voice, uh, I mean, Wi-Fi networks for voice services? That's a very good question. So there are a lot of different ways in which operators are trying to use Wi-Fi calling, and that those are the different motivations that, uh, that operators are uh, really seeking when it comes to Wi-Fi calling. So uh, a lot of operators are looking at Wi-Fi calling as a means to extend their reach, extend their coverage into the uh, tough spots that they typically have to deal with, things like indoors, things like cell edge, for instance, where their specific uh, LTE or cellular macro frequencies are uh, not very well suited to, to provide coverage. So that's one reason uh, behind Wi-Fi calling. And a lot of operators are looking at uh, Wi-Fi calling as a mechanism to offload voice traffic onto Wi-Fi hotspots, thereby freeing up more, more of their spectrum for other types of data use cases. And interestingly enough, uh, there are operators who are looking at Wi-Fi calling as a mechanism to sort of vet out their IMS deployment strategy because they can potentially use the same IMS core network to provide this as a uh, new service without having to uh, take all the time to uh, make changes to the LTE, cellular network deployment itself, the radio network. Uh, that could be done as a phase two. So a lot of operators are considering that option as well. Uh, with, all these, uh, with all these different use cases, the uh, user ultimately gets to see Wi-Fi as yet another air interface where voice calls just seamlessly happen. So it becomes very important for the device to uh, provide this service under all these different use cases uh, as, as a carrier grade voice service, even though it's all happening over a Wi-Fi air interface that's typically not associated with carrier grade services. So, so this sort of a big shift is happening. 
Now, uh, how do you choose, if you're an operator, uh, whether at, at any point in time you want to use Wi-Fi and LTE? So let's say that they're both available. Um, what's the best way to go? And is, is the choice, is it a network choice or a device choice, or is it taken in conjunction? This is, uh, from an execution standpoint, a device choice, mm -hmm. meaning there is no network equipment assistance in terms of being able to tell a device that, OK, now you need to use uh, Wi-Fi calling as opposed to cellular network calling, for instance. So ultimately, the, the smarts are, are device-driven smarts here. Uh, but in, uh, in the device algorithms, uh, there could be provisions put in place to uh, take into account operator's preferences or, or the, the real deployment uh, uh, intentions uh, that that an operator might have when it comes to Wi-Fi as a service. For instance, in our Snapdragon platform, we do support a uh, sophisticated algorithm that takes into account the quality of uh, Wi-Fi air interface, the quality of cellular air interface, and uh, then determine which air interface is best suited for a voice as a service. And in this mix, we also do take into account uh, an operator's uh, design guidelines as to whether, at this particular point, uh, one or the other air interface is uh, preferred from, from, uh, from a business or from a tariff or from a uh, use case perspective. So a lot of different things go into making that ultimate call. But the call itself is, uh, the decision itself is very device rooted at this point. Yeah, because I guess that the operator doesn't necessarily have visibility in the network in the same way the device has. The device knows exactly what the performance is, regardless of who manages the Wi-Fi network. Because, um, and, and I guess that that's interesting because it opens the the the, the use of Wi-Fi calling not just uh, on the you know the trusted networks that are operated by the operator, but the operator can start using Wi-Fi calling on other networks as well. And, and that, that, that is quite important, don't you think? It's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so, so the, the, the principle, the premise behind Wi-Fi calling is all of a sudden uh, any hotspot out there mm -hmm. could potentially be something that a user could latch onto. And, and if uh, access level credentials allow the use of that uh, hotspot or that access point, uh, that point on uh, users can just make uh, voice calls to any operator's network uh, from, from these premises. So devices ultimately are in the uh, best position to be able to evaluate and characterize performance of any given access point at any given time. From uh, talking to operators uh, or from your viewpoint, um, what do you, how do you think that the, the relative size in terms of minutes of use uh, uh, for Wi-Fi calling versus Volte is going to be? Because Wi-Fi, is, it, it, it's often available wherever we spend most of the time, which is at home or at work. Um, does that mean that there's going to be more Wi-Fi calling than Volte or same? Or what, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, that just might be the case. Uh, most users end up spending uh, a lot of their stationary time uh, around Wi-Fi hotspots. So if the uh, if the premise behind Wi-Fi calling that, that an operator might have uh, allows the use or allows the maximization of uh, use of access points or Wi-Fi hotspots, then yes, it's quite possible that going forward there might be a shift in terms of the volume of calls that uh, get placed over Wi-Fi air interface versus cellular. But it's all a function of uh, how ultimately the hotspot uh, fares in terms of quality as well. If you would uh, imagine along the lines of the question you asked, if, if there were a whole bunch of users at a Starbucks all trying to make use of that one Wi-Fi hotspot for calling, then uh, algorithmically our devices would be able to sense that well, given everything that's going on right now, uh, this hotspot may not be the best from a quality perspective. So we might continue using the cellular interface for, for calling. So those type of dynamic decisions would have to ultimately dictate what, what level of volume the cellular network sees versus a hotspot. Uh, but yes, that sort of a shift is definitely possible.
Mm-hmm. Okay, so the role of voice is, is changing, and uh, it's uh, it's quite exciting to see how you know the the older service is, is getting a new life, so to say. Um, in the next, over the next few years, what do you think is happening, and what is it you guys at Qualcomm are focusing on in terms of innovation for voice services? Sure, absolutely. So we are uh, doing a few different things in terms of uh, voice innovation, or in terms of. Uh, uh, migrating uh, voice services to Volti itself. So uh, first and foremost, Volti, although uh, is, is one acronym that we use to refer to this whole technology, uh, it means uh, slightly different things to uh, different operators in, in different parts of the world. So uh, one key uh, initiative from our side is to support global IMS, global Volti uh, requirements. This. This uh, often goes well beyond what industry standards document. Uh, It it goes into custom requirements that different operators might have for one reason or another. Uh, So that in itself is a key initiative where several uh, several markets, several nations are still to deploy Volti as a service and and we are uh, actively participating in enabling that. In addition to that, once we have uh, prevalence of uh, Volti uh, like solutions out there with uh, AMR wideband as as the technology being used. Uh, We are trying to uh, motivate uh, improvements to voice quality by enhancing the codecs that we support on our device platform. For instance, we are migrating uh, our solutions to uh, EVS, which is the next generation standards based codec, which is capable of not just wideband, but also super wideband uh, audio spectrum. And, and this uh, clearly marks a big leap in, in terms of speech quality that, uh, that users will experience. And uh, Wi-Fi calling is something that we're uh, taking uh, a very serious uh, look into in terms of being able to bring voice quality performance on the Wi-Fi air interface at par with cellular in every way, shape uh, and form possible so that uh, the users have uh, a seamless experience when it comes to uh, converged use cases that will involve both cellular and Wi-Fi. That sounds so very interesting. And um, it looks like there's going to be a bright future for, for voice, uh, uh, despite the fact that we spend most of our time talking about data. Um, uh, Shama, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So this conversation was part of a report on the new role of voice uh, uh, written by Sensafidi and uh, in collaboration with uh, Arcel Wireless. Uh, Thank you all for uh, listening to us and uh, uh, you can get the report online. Thanks.